took us a little while to get situated. Uh, where's my friend Jim McKnight? Where are you at? Jim, would you pray for us? I, I'm not feeling well. I'm just going to be honest. So I'm not bringing my A game today. But Jesus always does. So I'm going to ask Jim to pray for me. And then we're going to press through. All right? So Jim, pray. <coughs> Father, you are the master of physician. And you can heal physical ailments. And you can heal emotional and interpersonal ailments as well. And so we pray, Father, that right now as Chuck gets ready to teach us, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would work through him in a miraculous way. And that even Amen. as he's instructing Amen. us, God, that you would be working in him to make him feel better. Yes. And we pray, Father, that as a body, we would be listening and that you give us ears to hear. And that even as we interact with Chuck and Deb, that we would be speaking uh, and thinking the kinds of things that will help him feel better. I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. So if you come up to me and I'm not my chipper self, don't take it personally, okay? Nothing wrong with you. It's not your breath or anything like that. It's all me. But uh, one of the things that I really like about these passages that we're going to be studying here in a few minutes is that Jesus really paints a picture of what it's going to take to follow him. What this looks like. And I spent 29 years in the army uh, running next to men and women that learned how to fight wounded. In fact, they would give blood, sweat, and tears for a little piece of cloth or a little piece of metal. And when I hear Jesus, he's saying, that effort that you gave for your country, for your fellow soldiers, I want you to give that kind of effort for me. And so when Jesus outlines these things, it's not for a little piece of cloth or for a little piece of metal that Jesus is pointing us, directing us, telling us what the goal is. The goal is to serve and glorify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And He is worthy. The goal is to snatch people out of the fires of hell so that they might live for all eternity with our King. That is the goal. And it is worthy to learn how to fight wounded. He is worthy. So as we listen to Jesus, and he puts the bar way up here for us, we just come to grips with that. He is worthy. So we're going to be studying some passages that most of you in this room have studied many times. You, this is a review, but it's not a review. I want you to look at this with fresh eyes. Remember that Jesus has been modeling the ways of the kingdom for his men as he went throughout all of Galilee and Judea. He's modeling. He's preaching the messages of the kingdom so that not only would the people hear these things, but as men would hear and then see these things as he practiced what he preached. And so he's going along and then he sends out 12 to do exactly what he was doing. Now, how many of you have 12 people that you're mentoring that are sharing the gospel. Just raise your hand. Isn't that cool? That's a goal, okay? But 
Next, Jesus sends out 72 more. How many of you have 72 <laughs> people that are rapidly sharing the gospel? Garrett, raise your hand. I know in Austin there are such people. All right? That's the goal. And look at what Jesus is doing. He's amassing this army of men and women who are sharing the kingdom of God with other people. This is what he's doing, and he's getting ready to send out first the 12, and then the 72. So we're going to look at those passages this morning. So, uh, in your churches, I don't use the G word. In your churches, uh, let's see. This is church 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, you got it? If you're an odd church, I mean, that didn't come out right. <laughs> if you're an odd number church, Matthew 9, 36 through 10, 42. And I want you to take your piece of paper and draw a line down the middle. And I want you to write on the right side all the things Jesus told them to do. And then on the left side, all the things Jesus told them not to do. Okay? So all you odd churches, you're Matthew. Even churches, you're going to be Luke 10, 1 through 24. I'm going to give you about uh, 20 minutes. So you've got to do Evelyn Wood Speed Bible Study. Okay, so 20 minutes to go through that process. Just draw the line, do's and don'ts. And let's uh, discover once again what Jesus is telling us to do.
In John 5, 19 and 20, he says, The Son of Man can do nothing of himself. He only does what he sees the Father doing. And Father loves the Son, so he shows him what he's doing. And he does it in like manner. And greater things you will see that you may marvel. Jesus did not do one act that was outside of the Father's instruction. And so when we come to this passage, we know that Jesus is doing what the Father commanded, and He's leaving us with those instructions. Every bit of this, I, I believe, is prescriptive not descriptive. Now, how you, what wineskin you put it in, well, that's up to you and your context and trying to figure it out. But I believe we are commanded to go. We are commanded to find people of peace. We are commanded to heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead. And I'm just going to take that to the bank. If Jesus, if you did it and you said it, I'm going to do my best to emulate that. Because that's my goal in life anyways. Become just like you. And so I'm going to take this seriously. I'm going to do it. Now, you're looking... We, I want to clarify a couple of things. Person of peace. We're, you know, we're so frenetic. We're so excited. We're getting out there trying to find the person of peace. And we're learning that what we thought was a person of peace a year ago, yeah. it ain't a person of peace. <laughs> Aren't we learning that lesson? Yeah. So what is a person of peace according to the scriptures? What do you see in scripture that a person of peace is? Someone who gives you access to their oikos. All right. So they receive the message and the messenger, right? And then they give you access to the oikos, so they're on mission with you, and they begin to spread the kingdom message through the oikos, either through you helping them or personally, right? So, simple, they receive the messenger, the message, and the mission. <coughs> If you've got a person who's lonely and they, they just want to talk, love on, love loud. But that's not a person of peace. I'm sorry. Okay? And don't be too quick to tell everybody on Facebook you found a person of peace. Because <laughs> most of those ain't. Okay? So a good definition. Another thing is that Jesus comes and he says, I want you to bring the presence of God. And in order to bring the presence of God, you must be present. You must stay. You must love. You must take care of. You must be present. I want you to bring the power of God. In the power of the Holy Spirit, we're praying and healing and delivering. Bring the power of God. And then I want you to bring the proclamation of the gospel. It's not good enough just to live your life before people in a good way. Good Buddhists do that. Good Hindus do that. Good Muslims do that. There are two wings on the airplane. Which one is most important? <laughs> You live the gospel and you proclaim the gospel. Proclamation without living usually is hypocrisy. But living without proclamation is a mystery. You need both wings on this airplane. So make sure that when you enter in, you bring presence, power, 
and proclamation. And Jesus promised you that he would be with you always, even to the end of the age. So you're bringing the power. You're bringing the presence. We just need to open our mouth and bring that proclamation of the gospel. Let me uh, wrap up before we take a break. We're uh, going through this again. And it's interesting that every time I go through this, I see something new. I know this verse because I memorized it a long time ago. But I didn't put it in context until this morning. This is Matthew 10, the sending out of 12. And he's giving this cheery little motivational speech. You know, I'm sending you out like wolves. And he also tells them, he says, the student is not above his teacher, nor the slave above his master. It is enough that the student become like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they called me the prince of demons, they're going to do it to you too. You know what? That's in the context of the sending out of the twelve. Do you think that when Jesus said, I want you to be like me, that he meant that like in Matthew 9, 35, where it said that Jesus was going throughout all the towns and villages, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of sickness. Do you think that when he said, you're going to become like the master, you're probably going to be doing some of this too. That the coin cannot be divided. You follow me and you fish. They go together. One last thing. You are SC training. Strategy coordinator training. It is no longer good enough for you to go on house peace searches. You've graduated. Some of you are saying, oh. <laughs> you are all muddy boot generals now. So now... You are training people to do Houses of Peace searches and you are with them as they do it. So it's no longer good enough for you to do this. You must train them. And what is your goal? Your goal is to get 12 BDI, Fang Baron, Foam at the Mouth, Gospel Sharers <laughs> to go with you. And then what's the next goal? 72. And then what is after that? 500. 3,000. But the ultimate goal is this. We do this until there's no place left. That is the goal. That is the objective. So we're going to take a break. Thanks for letting me hang out with you. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Lord Jesus, uh, thank you. with a mission, a purpose that will ultimately bring you complete honor and glory. And so we devote ourselves fresh and new to being your messengers, your servants, your laborers, your children. And Lord Jesus, thank you for being with us while we do this. We will not quit until every man, woman, and child on this planet hears your good news about the kingdom. 
I thank you and bless our time as we fellowship. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, 1045, guys. Be back in here, 1045.